We're back at the same place where we were two weeks ago. Uh, weather today is cloudy and overcast. We're going to be diving today with the D2 like we did two weeks ago. Uh, the settings are discriminations at 8, sensitivity 90, the salt sensitivity at 9. Um, audio response at 7 so we could hear the real deep targets. Uh, I keep the tones for the gold range between 40 and 79. I keep that at the highest so I could hear that better underwater. Uh, you could hear other tones in the 80s, the sinkers and the brass tags and whatnot. They'll be loud and clear but will be a lower tone. Uh, we're looking forward to doing this today, but it's going to be a little dark down there. As I'm entering the water here, we have a quick break with the rain, but it was coming down pretty heavy as I was walking towards shore. And it uh, ended up that it rained most of the dive, uh, kept everyone off the beach. I popped up a few times and, you know, it doesn't bother me underwater, but it definitely uh, was coming down. No lightning, just, just a steady rain all morning. Using 40 pounds of lead in a steel tank that weighs 53 pounds, I uh, still need to let all the air out of the BC so I could get to the bottom. That's the noise you're hearing now. A few minutes into the dive, I get my first signal, and it's a real strong 92, and you could hear it both in discriminate and the pinpoint. It has a little depth to it, but extremely solid signal. Okay, this huge chunk of brass explains why the signal was so strong. This one was a solid repeatable at 79, and you could hear in the old metal pinpoint, it sounded like it had some good depth to it. This brass cylinder is an antique lipstick case with markings dating back to the 1920s. This was a strange signal jumping between the upper 70s and low 80s. Crusted up junk metal bangle bracelet watch. This 8788 signal was so deep that in all metal pinpoint it was hard to get a repeatable on it. But in discriminate it was loud and clear. You can just tell very, very deep. And these 8788s at this location usually result in one thing.
old brass swim buckles. This deep signal read 69 and it was coming back a little erratic as you heard but it was definitely repeatable. This is the exact same size as a nickel, but it read way too high for a nickel. Ended up being a lead slug that really is identical in terms of size to a nickel. This strong repeatable only read 46 but it was a solid hit. What looked to me like an old shotgun shell actually is some kind of brass cap with the letter A on it. This signal is a broken 76. So it might be near iron because I couldn't get a solid lock on hit. This is a heavily crusted silver dime. Uh, usually they're paper thin like this and it read out of the hole 81.
This one was locking on 63 and in all metal pinpoint, it was tough to hear because it was so deep, but it was giving me a nice strong signal in Discriminate. While digging in this mud and gravel, I felt something smooth. An embossed nutmeg soda bottle going back probably a little over 100 years. Still in the same hole where the bottle was. We're locking on 63 and it's a nice clear target. What I thought at first was an oyster shell is actually part of a broken plate that was in the same hole. Nineteen oh two V nickel. Love coming up on these horseshoe crabs, they are so prehistoric looking. This was a deep 76 and if you listen carefully you can hear the all metal pinpoint was barely picking it up. So whatever it is is down deep. Rust it up antique pocket knife. That background noise you hear is a boat overhead. Sounds like it's right on top, but it's out at sea a little way. It's just very loud. So you're not gonna be able to hear the signal, but it did read 58 and uh, was a nice repeatable with some depth.
a buffalo nickel that came out so clean you could actually make it out underwater. Heading back to shore and found a pair of sunglasses floating around the bottom. A bunch of targets for three hours of hunting, but nothing really outrageous. It was just a good time getting out there. Uh, a lot of garbage, a lot of heavy sand too. Uh, different than last time, I found the layer of sand on top of the rocks and clay was a lot deeper, uh, which is what happens with the open waters here. The open ocean shifts around quite a bit. Here's a crusted up silver dime, and when you break off the edge of it, you can make out the date. It looks like 1934. Uh, here's a 1902 nickel. This is what was in with the bottle. And next is a buffalo nickel. Came out in decent shape with a good date. And the next one as well came out with a good date. And here we have a lead slug. And if you stack it with the nickels, it's the exact same size. Here's that brass cylinder as found. But when you clean it up, it has a name clearly on one side. And then on the other side, I guess it's the proprietor's name. Did a little research on this and it looks like it was between 1920 and 1923. This watch was made to be lost. Uh, the Chico's designer watch has a spring-loaded band, like a bangle bracelet, and uh, it comes off, I'm sure, really easily. Very heavily crusted. Looks like it's made of some kind of pop metal. Here you can see the outline of a key, and it must have been on some sort of iron ring that really crusted up over the years. This old brass cap has a distinct A on it, but I'm not sure what it stood for. This heavy piece of brass was the first signal of the day. While digging that V-nickel, got lucky and stumbled on this old bottle. Not sure what nutmeg soda would taste like, but I can see why it's not around anymore. Anyways, I'll be heading out again in a couple weeks, going back to the same spot. It's a big area, so sand always moves around. You never know what we're going to get. Thanks again for watching.